Here's my hundred dollars. Seventy-five for killing the animals, and twenty-five for milkman cutscene. Seriously, his milk is delicious. Let's show cancer who's the boss. I think that's Tony Danza is the boss. Anonymous donated $100 and said simply, eat all animals in all games. There are some animals in some of the games that don't look very delicious, Anonymous. I don't think I would agree. Cat's Tuxedo donated $200 saying, putting this towards naming the fallen human Funky for the sheer novelty slash honor of holding the title Funky Savior of Monsters. Ben C. donated $110 saying, thanks for another AGDQ. I watch every year. So do I, Ben C. So do I. Dr. Arkfire donated $30, saying, just wanted to, to donate quickly to AGDQ. Always good to see gaming have a positive effect. Shoutouts to the rest of the Scottish Smash scene. Aye, shoutouts to them. AGDQ 2017 sponsors the Prevent Cancer Foundation. The Prevent Cancer Foundation is one of the nation's leading voluntary health organizations and the only U.S. nonprofit focused solely on cancer prevention and early detection. Founded in 1985, it has catapulted cancer prevention to prominence and fulfills its mission through research, education, outreach, and advocacy across the country. For more information, please visit www.preventcancer.org. I just want to remind you really quickly, the uh, window is closing very soon for nominating a name for the save game for uh, Ocarina of Time 3D. Um, that's going to close really just a minute or two, as that's the next game coming up right quick. Uh, Ocarina of Time 3D, played by Ben Stevens, 56. Remiel Gaming donated $500. Did I already read that one? I don't think so. $500. GDQ's 2017 hype have been saving this money to donate for this event, so put half to killing all of the frames and half to the milkman because he must deliver the milk. People seem excited about delivering milk. Barney Stinson deliv uh, delivered $100 to us and said, here's a donation for great runners and a great cause. Suit up! Anonymous donated $100 and said, best of luck to all the runners and shout outs to everyone helping behind the scenes. Also, nice pillow. I think he's referring to the ape pillow we were just seeing on screen a minute ago. So actually, the donation incentive for the file name is closed. So donate for something else. Speaking of donations, Anonymous also donated $100, saying, I've never donated on day one, but I thought I'd go for it now. Good luck, everyone. We appreciate it, Anonymous. Kindle Jack donated $101. AGDQ is by far the greatest gaming event of the year, showcasing the phenomenal skill and tremendous warmth of the gaming community. Let's do this! $2 to comfort the animals, and $99 to get wrecked by Sands. I'm not sure that comfort the animals is one of the options. Personally, I would interpret that as 
kill the animals, but there you go. Hammer Priest donated $100, saying, Donating to see the amazing brokenness that is Borderlands 2's Glitch Exhibition. I'm looking forward to it myself. Anonymous donated $20, saying, First time watching live, and since these donations are going towards saving lives, let's save those animals in Super Metroid, because their lives matter too. I'm not sure that's true, Anonymous, because they are just digital bits inside a computer, and you're making us lose frames. Surreal Canine donated $50, saying, Third year of watching. Love what you guys are doing. Gentleman Co. donated $50 saying, Hello everyone at AGDQ and everyone watching. My second time watching GDQ. Loved the last year and I'm looking forward to this week. Help Lint get the Triforce. I'll check my pockets. Flux Dog and Sidelia donated $100 saying, We finally get to donate to this awesome display of skill and dedication. Huzzah, good players! Also, save the animals. We need something for the barbecue afterwards. All right, we're ready to start the next game. Next up is Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D, played by Ben Stevens. Ben? Your save game name, the winner is Warmham, W-A-R-M-H-A-M. Am I on mic right now? Can I... Oh yeah. Excellent, okay, cool. All right, so this is gonna be The Legend of Zelda. Um, am I counting myself down or? I can count you down if you like or you can do it. Uh, count me down, please. Are you ready? Yes, I am ready. All right, audience with me in three, three, two, one, go! All right. So, in case you didn't already know and you somehow stumbled onto this part of the internet, this is Ocarina of Time in 3D. And uh, everything's better in 3D, so. so this is going to be great. All right, so right off the bat, I want to explain something. Uh, the run is going to start really soon. Um, every input matters in this game you cannot look away for a second. So even on the original version, text mashing is pretty mundane. It's not in this version. Every single text box has a one frame window where if you hit the B button, and only the B button, it'll advance the text box really fast. So I have to mash pretty much at a really high speed throughout the entire run every single time there's a, a bit of text. Um, so as soon as the Deku Tree starts talking, I, uh, I gotta go ham on that. Warm ham, apparently. <laughs> what does that mean? That's kind of gross. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, this is kind of a, a nice return to what Ocarina of Time on the N64 is, but it's going to be, you're going to see some differences, uh, some, some big ones, some small ones, you'll see a lot of similarities as well. All right, so here goes the text. Something really weird about text, anything on a white background or inside of a shop, you cannot get quick text on. I don't know why that is, it's really random, so you'll see that big one right there was fast. Obviously, the bigger the text box, the more important it is. Those were all pretty bad. I promise I won't talk about text the whole run, but that wasn't that great. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's going to be happening. Also, one thing I'd like to say, uh, the months leading up to ADDQ, I've seen so many people in Twitch chats, uh, I've read some articles of people going like, Ocarina of Time 3D, wow, that that really sucks. Why didn't they put the original Ocarina of Time in? Wow, I heard Ocarina of Time 3D is like a horrible game. Like, can you even <laughs> speed run that? And uh, I, I'm here today to show those people that, that they've been very wrong. And this, this, is a, this is a hot speed game. Speaking of text, isn't the Japanese version actually slower for this game? I th All right, so here's the thing. Because of how quick text works, um, 
languages don't really make all that big of a difference. We think that the Portuguese language is the fastest, and up next would be Spanish. Uh, and we think Japanese is actually one of the slower languages, but there hasn't been a whole lot of testing, and there doesn't really need to be because the time save or waste from it is so insignificant. It's more about how good you are at matching text and less about how fast the actual text is. All right, and with that, we are out. All right. Um, and we're back into another cutscene, so that's great. Okay, so the first thing we want to do in this run is we want to grab the Kokiri sword, and then we are going to be off on our adventure. Uh, normally, you'd have to beat the Deku Tree to uh, get out of the first dungeon, or uh, to get out of the first area, but we, uh, we're, we're going to make our own route here. Also, I turned off the gyroscopic controls and the uh, inverted Y-axis because uh, I don't really like gyroscope. It's, it's kind of all preference. It, it wastes like a second or two, but I think I get a lot more consistency with aiming if I'm just using uh, analog controls. Shoutouts to ZFG who does box movement here, but uh, rolling is way better. So uh, throughout the run, I'm going to be doing a lot of walking backwards. Uh, if you've never seen Ocarina of Time, it probably looks weird, but it's pretty fast. Um, there's a lot of situations where it's not too hot, though. Because uh, you get stuck doing something called box movement, where basically you're combining uh, side hops and back walking. And that's really only good if you have to do it for like long distances. But over a, a short distance, it's it's really not that good, because you spend more time like setting up the angle for backwalking than you actually do. OK. So this is the first glitch in the game. That angle's not going to work. OK. Nice. All right. Oh, I talked to him. Shoot. OK. <laughs> Woo! So for some reason, all right, we need to address the elephant in the room. Um, this game wasn't actually made by Nintendo. They licensed another company to develop it by the name of Grezzo. Um, we're going to be talking about Grezzo a lot because they made some very interesting choices when making this game. Um, and more often than not, they work in the speedrunner's favor, uh, which is really nice. And that was one of them right there. For some reason, they thought it was a really good idea for after... Link swings his sword three times. If you put it away, he takes this massive step back. It's almost like he teleports. And uh, it's so fast that you can clip through corners, actors, a bunch of stuff. So that's basically what we did there. It's, uh, it's, it's so weird. I, I don't know how, how they thought that was a good idea to add in that animation. But, uh, but it works well for us. You'll see it once or twice more in this run. Uh, it's, it's only good for like acute angles, though. So anything less than 90 degrees is pretty broken with a triple slash clip. All right. It's funny, though, because Grezzo would like, quote unquote, patch out things like ISG. But then everything that was possible in the original game due to ISG is basically possible due to something else that they created. Yeah, so they tried to patch stuff out. and. Most of the time, they, their patches, quote unquote patches, actually made the game even more broken, which is kind of funny. There's, there's a really good, I, I don't remember, uh, it's not good, it's actually really bad. There's an article in like Kotaku or something where they interviewed the makers of the game, and they said that they left all of the glitches in on purpose, which is not true at all. Uh, see, when Nintendo was marketing this game, they, they were talking about how it was not a remake, or it was a remake, it wasn't a port. It was built from the ground up, blah, 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 blah. It's not, none of that's true. It's a complete port. They copied and pasted code. They modified some uh, small things, added some textures, et cetera, et cetera. And so basically, they were just like, oh yeah, we left the glitches in uh, to like cover their tracks, to be like, we're, we're so good at programming this game that everything is exactly the same. But we didn't copy paste. It's a completely new game. Okay, so right here, um, I, I have to wait for it to turn day again. So the only time that what I'm doing actually matters as far as time goes is when I'm in a state where time isn't passing. So right here in the Hyrule Castle area, time is passing. So I can goof around. Um, 
But in market town right here, time isn't passing, so I want to get out of there as fast as I can. Same goes for when I'm talking to NPCs, like this cool owl here. He's a great guy. We'll see him a lot. He's actually not that great. He's really annoying. <laughs> the good thing about that owl, though, in this game is, is uh, it's kind of weird for speedruns, but on the original Ocarina of Time, if you just mass the A and B button, it would automatically select the first response. And if you select the first response, he just tells you the same thing over again. But on this game, they require you to hit the A button. And since we mass text with B, you have to physically like switch the option. And so you can't accidentally hit the wrong option, which is good. Because he asks, he asks, like, are you sure that you don't not want to hear what I said again? Yeah. <laughs> it, like, I don't know. It's, I don't know why they thought that was a good idea, but whatever. OK, so these guards, as you can see, they're not very uh, attentive. Um, they're pretty bad at their job, except for when they're really good at their job. And uh, hopefully you won't see them. Hopefully they're slacking off today. Um, but sometimes they're not, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. But these ones outside, they're really easy to avoid, especially at night. Their vision is kind of uh, obscured at night. What? Come on. I'm a box. <laughs> Okay, so now this is why I need to wait for days so that I can hatch this egg and show it to Talon so that he can move out of the way. So uh, the reason I only set up one of these boxes right here is because you actually only need one of them to make it over to the loading zone. Um, and you don't actually even need to push it all the way to the edge. Um, so I'm going to be pushing it right here. And with a jump slash, should, yep, all right. That's actually a kind of precise jump slash when you only push it that much. Uh, All right, let's see how these guys go. All right, made it past the first guy. He will catch you and like for no reason. It's really dumb. There's like pretty much nothing you can do to avoid him. Okay, this guy, he's playing a dangerous game with me. All right, I'm going for it. Be a man. All right. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, okay, okay. All right, move. Come on, come on. All right, all right, that's fine. Nice. <laughs> that's fine. That was actually pretty fast. That last guy. Whew. So the way those guards work is um, they have to stop at every corner of the hedges they go to, but they can also stop in the middle of them. They all start in the same position, but when they stop, how long it takes them to move again and how many times they look back and forth is all completely random. So you can get some really weird patterns and some very unfortunate ones as well. Uh, that one was actually pretty weird, but it turned out to be good. All right, so a lot of text matching. This is a great time for some donation readings if you have them. Hey, listen, Ben Stevens. We have Dark Plasma Ball donated $100 saying best of luck to Ben Stevens and all of this year's speedrunners, and I look forward to watching an amazing week of fun runs. By the way, the uh, 3D effect doesn't seem to be working for me, Ben. I don't understand this game. <laughs> Here, I'll turn it on. Isn't oh. this fun? That's much better. Oh, yeah. I was wondering if I needed special glasses or something. <laughs> People in the audience are lucky. I was going to leave the gyro on for the beginning of the run and just swivel my 3DS around when I was backwalking, make you all motion sick. But I thought <laughs> I'd be nice. Morindor donated $100, saying, super hyped for another week of AGDQ. Keep up the great work. Looking forward to the upcoming Zelda Legend of Zelda run. I hope you're enjoying it right now, Morindor. So sometimes quick text doesn't actually really matter, like here, even if I mash really fast, you still have to wait for the camera to like pan in there. So no matter how fast you mash, you still have to kind of wait. But as you can see here, uh, whenever the text box just flashes by in a, in a second, that's a frame perfect input. And I'm doing many, many, many of those over the course of you know, just this three minute cutscene. Those were all quick text, that one was slow. Those were both quick, yeah. So, so you get the picture. Good, good text mashing is really what separates the, the really good runners in this game from, from everyone else. So, 
But uh, it's definitely hard. You'll have some days where you know you're just trying to get some runs out there, and you just like aren't mashing very well, and it just kind of sucks. But uh, it's kind of cool because I've been running this game for like almost five years now, and like I'm still just like mashing, but I'm like subconsciously timing my mashes. I don't know. Like you get really good at at it after a while. Zelda Lullaby is really hard to play. Um, it's the hardest song in the game, for that, sure. Every song is the hardest song in the <laughs> game. Uh, that's, that's a good goal. Don't, don't mess up any songs in this run. I don't think that's going to happen. That's almost impossible. It's so hard. The songs are so difficult in this game. Okay. So basically, I haven't really talked about the route at all. Um, basically, uh, this game, we escape the forest, and it gets a little slow for a little bit. Basically, we want to get bombs as fast as we possibly can. Because once we get bombs, like, things get kind of crazy. We can do a lot of sequence breaks. Um, there's a lot of route options that open up. But until that point, we kind of just have to go along with the route of the game. But, uh, but once we get bombs, things get insane. But, but since, since things don't get too crazy for the beginning, I, uh, I worked really hard on implementing some swag strats all over the place. So, so hopefully I can get most of those. And we're back walking again. As you can see, we do a lot of back walking in this game. So, isn't it if it's more than like full, four rolls of distance, it's more worthwhile to back walk if it's a straight line? I think on N64 it is seven rolls, but this game, rolling is like faster in this game, so I think it's more. Rolling is pretty worth it in most spots. Okay, this is the hardest trick in the game. It's the carpenter side hop. It's a. Uh, I think this angle's good. There's a there's a carpenter dude, and they run really weird in this game, and he's on the stairs. And if we side up in front of him, it's really fast. Oh, I was too early. Uh, because if you roll next to these guys, you talk to them, and so you kind of get stuck behind them. That That's... carpenter kind of looked like Spike Vegeta. <laughs> oh my goodness, it did. <laughs> uh, this guard loves to talk. Text is so much faster in this game compared to N64. Like this cutscene of talking to this guy takes like 45 seconds or something. It's really slow. But here we can, even with subpar text, knock it out in like 20. Okay, so a lot of back walking in this run. Um, but here's an opportunity to show off some fast movement that's not back walking. I'm gonna be doing a <laughs> trick here. I'm gonna let the tech tight beat me up and I'm gonna go really fast. So let's see if I get this. Oh, ah, uh, that's a little scary. Okay, all right, that was really, I totally messed that up, and I somehow saved it, so that's good. Okay, so this is called a FES, or a forward extended super slide. Uh, basically, if you're holding this really precise uh, position on the control stick, basically you just nudge it, you just lightly, you give it a little love nudge uh, out of the neutral position, and then you get damaged or, you know, get boosts somehow, you can maintain the speed that you had by targeting, and so you can go really fast with it. Um, we're going to implement that a lot more later on uh, in slightly faster fashion, but um, for now, since we don't really have any explosives to damage us, that Tektite does just fine. Okay. So the only reason we're just going to pop in to say hi to my boy Darunia, he has the best item in the game. Um, <laughs> but we're not getting that right now. We'll come back. We just want the gift of fire right now uh, because we're going to use this to open up a path to the Lost Woods. Now, something weird about Deku Sticks in this game, uh, it's kind of unintuitive, but uh, lighting torches or sticking the Deku Stick back into a flame actually resets the timer. Um, because a Deku Stick will eventually, if it's lit on fire, will, um, it, it, it'll burn the stick down and then you'll lose it. And we don't want to lose the Deku Stick because we need it for a few more things. But, but lighting a torch or sticking it in a flame actually resets the timer. So apparently setting a stick more on fire makes it not as on fire. I don't know. Okay. So something else I haven't mentioned is I've been carefully watching my health throughout the uh, the early portions of this game. Um, 
I took a heart of damage on the bridge to get the rupees outside market. I took a half heart of damage on the tech tech to do the slide. And I fell down to take a heart, half a heart of damage in uh, Goron City. And that's important because uh, these guys here are dangerous. They want me dead. So I need to be very careful that they do not kill me. Ah, uh, he hit me. Okay. Little scary. That's a little less health than I'd like. Uh, something else I forgot to mention is uh, side hopping. You'll see me side hopping up slopes a lot. And that's because side hopping is actually, without any outside forces, the fastest form of movement. But you'd have to do it frame perfectly, except for when you're going up or down a slope, because your side hop gets reset faster, or you can carry the speed of the side hop for longer. So there's another good time for donations if you have them. <clears throat> well, we have $15 from Oipo. Zelda's my favorite game. Glad to see it's one of the first and not actually during nighttime. Good luck to Ben Stevens 56. Thank you. Sari's song is the hardest song in the game, by the way. <laughs> I'm wondering how they got there ahead of you. Beats me. Okay, so since I'm at low health, I have to move really fast here or I will die. Will Ben make it through this high-intensity, low-health situation? I love Stay that voice. Tuned. I love it. <laughs> um, so we only use this song like once in the game. Uh, we literally only need it to get the best item in the game. Okay. Ah! Oh. Oh. I died. Our hero has fallen. So I kind of lied, actually, um, because... Uh, gee, look at that. Uh, wow, that was fast. So, the reason I was talking about managing health is actually because I plan every single hit I take there. And uh, those Deku scrubs in the Sacred Forest Meadow are kind of random. But I actually want to get to Sari with a half a heart, so when I come back down, they kill me. And they send me back. So all of that damage I took was planned so that I could die at that exact moment. Uh, it's actually not that difficult to do. Um, but those scrubs in Sacred Forest can really uh, beat you up if they want to. But they're usually pretty nice to me. Okay, so now, now we're getting the best item in the game. Shoutouts to my boy Aaron Toad for uh, <laughs> wearing the Goron bracelet. <laughs> so, I guess this is a good time to talk about kind of the bottleneck in this game. Um, in Ocarina of Time on N64, you can get bomb chews from pretty much anywhere. You can get them from Bottom of the Well, you can get them from Ganon's Tower, uh, you can get them from uh, Gerudo Fortress if you wanted to, you can get them from all over the place. In Ocarina of Time 3D, somehow, Grezzo managed to make this game incredibly broken in so many ways, and yet every single place that you can get bomb chews is a citadel. It's, they're all impenetrable. The biggest one that we've been working on for years now is Bottom of the Well, um, where there's a bomb chew chest under a bombable surface, and uh, there's like four or three ways to get it on N64. There's, there's nothing on this game. It, it's, wow, I got every single text box there. Wow, that was so fast. Um, it, it's... It's impossible. We're never finding early explosives. Uh, we've been working on it for so long. And we, we have like, uh, it, it's, it's like the McDonald's uh, you know, Monopoly scratch-offs. You always just uh, are missing one, right? Uh, well, that's what this is. We're just missing one step in like 10 different areas. We're just like, oh, if we could just do this one little thing, or oh, if this one thing just kind of worked slightly differently, we would have it. And it's just, it's just ridiculous. We've come up with so many times. I, I can't tell you how many nights I was up and going like, oh yeah, we found a new way to do early explosives, and then try it on 3DS, and it doesn't work. And I'm just, I'm devastated. All right, so coming up here, we're entering our first dungeon. Since this is all dungeons, you know, that's kind of important that we enter some dungeons, I guess. Okay, so I'm going to be doing a cutscene skip here. Um, basically, when you blow up this wall, uh, there's a cutscene that plays. It's like, hey, look, the Dongo's Cavern. Oh, I got the fast one. If you land right on the edge of a loading zone, 
Uh, when you exit the other side, you actually have less speed. Um, so it's faster because you only have to do one roll to get back into the dungeon instead of two. The reason the cutscene skip is good is it actually resets this platform cycle right here. Um, so the cutscene doesn't take that long, but you'd have to normally wait for those platforms a little bit longer. Swag! <laughs> oh, a little more damage than I wanted. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Get up there! Ah. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm a little low on health. Uh, I think I'll grab a safety heart in this next room. All right, pushing the armos. There's actually a trick that you can do I'm going to be doing later. If you use a, an item, like a trade quest item, on top of a blue switch. Oh, ooh, that was nice. Um, it actually will hold the switch down, uh, and the door will like stay open for a little bit. But it only works, on N64, it works with every switch in the game that's blue. But in this game, it only works with the blue switches in Jabu Jabu's belly. I don't know. OK, Lizalfos. Um, these guys have a lot of strategy involved in them. Uh, basically, in order for this fight to go really fast, I want them to never jump over my head. And you haven't seen it yet, but normally what you do is you hit them and they jump over you. Um, but if you stand right on the edge of these platforms, um, they don't jump because if they were to jump, it would put them in the lava or on top of you. And so they're programmed not to be able to do that. Okay, so that's the first half of the dungeon done. We'd actually have a way to skip all of those rooms if we had a bottle. Um, but bottle is pretty... Uh, it's comparable, but it's a little bit slower in this route to get it. Unlike N64, bottles are still pretty broken, but for different reasons. And uh, unfortunately, they're not too useful for this run, so we don't have to collect cuckoos, which is kind of nice. Here's another swag thread I like to do. It saves about a second and a half or something. Um, we're going to pick up this bomb, put it here. Oh, shoot. Uh, that's bad. Well, <laughs> I'm going to have to do it the regular way anyways, I guess. I probably could have saved it. Um, but what I was trying to do there... Oh, please grow back. You're kidding me. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that's awful. Here, here, I'll do it again. I'll do, I'll do the swag anyways. I'll go back. All right. And so I'm going to take this bomb and fill it in the spot where I took the other one from. I did it first try. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to uh, TK. Okay. Um, I don't need these, but there are some rupees there. Uh, they basically increase my odds of getting good RNG later in the run. It's nothing huge, but it's just for a little safety. All right. There's a strat in this room to, oh shoot, wow, that was weird. Okay, looks like we're pushing this. Um, I've never grabbed the Armos off the, the side like that, that's weird. I'm sure it's happened before, I just don't remember. Uh, okay, this room's a little scary. Um, this bridge, I haven't done it in a while, but it's not too hard to fall off of it, especially with these keys coming at you. Please don't hit me, okay, good. Sometimes that keys just hits you. All right, so there's Navi has a text trigger here, but you can backflip over it. All right, next room, oh, shoot. Next room is uh, something that a lot of newer runners really don't like. Uh, it's not that bad. I have a lot of tricks for it to make it a whole lot more consistent than you would initially make it out to be. Also in this room, they actually improved that ledge where you throw the bomb on. A lot of people re might remember uh, from playing Ocarina of Time on the N64 that the bomb just likes to bounce off the door. Um, but um, they actually made the ledge able to ca like catch the bomb on this one, so it makes it a little bit easier. So in that last room, you're normally supposed to have the slingshot, and you're supposed to shoot a switch on the wall. And uh, Oh, I missed. You're supposed to shoot a switch on the... I'm low on health. Uh, you're supposed to shoot a switch on the wall to make the fire go away. Um, but you can actually grab the corners of the platforms and kind of jump around. That first one's pretty easy, but this next room after this one, 
there's uh, two platforms they have to get around, so it's a little more difficult. Um, the jumps are pretty precise. They're not the worst things in the world, but uh, it's definitely not hard to mess them up. Okay, this health would be fine as long as I don't like mess up here a lot, which I hopefully won't. Okay, so we're gonna grab this corner and then kind of strafe over here. Okay, there's this eye platform. Oh, wow, I don't think I should have gotten the short hop there. The thing is, you can't be too close to the edge or you'll get like a smaller jump and it won't have enough distance. But I thought I was far enough away from the edge to not get that. Okay, so we're gonna jump over to this eye switch and then jump over to this platform. Uh, I'd like to be a little close to the edge. That's probably good. All right, nice. Nice. Get the cool strat. Hey. Nice. <laughs> that, that's pretty the most hard. most important trick. Yeah, that jump slash right there. That looks really cool. That's pretty hard on N64, actually. So now that we have bombs, things start, you know, uh, getting a little better here. Let me equip them. Okay. So having low health here actually isn't that bad because uh, I'm going to uh, kill Link again one more time in the next room coming up. Nice. You can light those eyes way faster on 3DS than you can on N64. You have to wait for the cutscene for the first eye to be done before the next one goes. Okay. Behind this wall, there's a Deku shield. And uh, we don't use it too much, but it's good for a few things. So since it's so close, it's definitely worth it to pick it up. And we're going to equip it. Okay. So in this next room, uh, normally you have to go around another really big room, and then there's a block over there. You can see it up there. You would push it down. Oh, wow. Well, that happened. OK. Uh, that's a little slow. Um, you would push it down off of the, uh, the platform and then push it onto the switch. But if you die on the switch, um, the game has to reload the dungeon again and send you back to the beginning. And it says, hmm, OK. What are all the temporary flags that we set? So basically, little things like, oh, you know, you, you got the thing out of this pot. Or, oh, you know, you blew up the stairs and put them down. And then it goes, OK, uh, is the block pushed onto the switch? And then it goes, well, there's something on the switch. It's got to be the block, right? Well, it's actually Link's dead body, which is kind of morbid, but uh, <laughs> it's the truth. Um, so it, the block, if you had looked, it was, uh, it was already pushed down. And so the, the boss door is open. So we're just going to come in. So King Nodongo is the final boss of the game, but he's also the first boss of the game. Um, it just depends on what category you're running, I guess. <laughs> uh, and, and in any percent, this is how the run would end, with uh, you beating King Dodongo and doing a glitch to get to the credits. But uh, in all dungeons, uh, we're just going to beat this dungeon first to kind of get it over with. Normally, in most other categories, you would come back to Dodongo's Cavern um, because there's another item that we're going to get later on that lets us do some pretty nifty things at the end of dungeons. But uh, for the sake of this category and the route I am using, it's not very good. So we're just going to beat the dungeon now. We're going to watch the cutscene after the blue warp. Oh, by the way, this boss is also really hard. I don't know if I'm going to make it. Look out for his signature move. <laughs> Lean back and breathe. Wow, I can't believe I killed him first try. That took me weeks when I was a kid. One thing I'd like to mention is that a difference between the original game and this game is that uh, you have the Deku stick and they do four damage for a jump slash in the original game. In this game, that is no longer the case. They don't do double damage anymore. So that's why he hasn't been using it. Yeah, so it's really weird. On N64 OOT, um, the Master Sword literally is the same damage as a Deku Stick. Like, 
Okay, so when you fight Ganon at the end of the game, usually only a Master Sword can hit him, but you can use a Deku Sword because they deal like the same damage. I don't know. It's really weird. They changed that in this version, though. So a Deku Stick, no matter how you use it, whether it be a Jump Slash, Regular Slash, etc., etc., it always does two damage, which is the equivalent of a, a, a Kokiri Sword Jump Slash. And I haven't said it because I... I'm so weathered in this game, I, I kind of forget that most people don't know a lot of the little details, but um, the most effective damage that you can do at all times is a jump slash because it doubles the damage that you would normally be doing with a normal slash, and that's the case for every single weapon except the Deku Stick, where it doesn't matter, it's all going to be the same. And okay. in addition, there was a, something known as power crouch stabs in the original game. That is completely patched and we cannot do it here. Yeah, so crowd stab. Do you know what the deal with that fox is actually? Did they just like forget to program it, or was that intended? Uh, they they got rid of it in English of Majora's Mask, so so probably not intended. I don't know. I, I think they just like didn't put a value for how much a crowd stab would do on N64, and so it's just like, well, what was the last thing that did damage? So if you did a jump attack, your crowd stab would do the damage of a, a jump attack, and it was really fast. Okay, so coming up here, I'm going to do another type of ESS slide, known as a HESS, a hyperextended super slide. This is the fastest form of movement that we can really get in this game. Um, it's kind of tricky. Uh, I hope I get them all here. Bomb count is kind of tight for the early portions of this run. So there's another one coming up right here. They're really fast when you do it well. Oh, that was bad. I've been doing that a lot recently. Wow. What? All right, I will get this. <laughs> there we go. Whoops. These Skulltulas are so bad. I hate them so much. So basically, they kind of just spin around up there randomly. And if they happen to look at you, you have to stop really fast. Um, but they move really fast on 3D, so like, if they see you, you have to stop instantly, or like right there, I was close, or they will, they will get you, and they will get you really bad. So you gotta be really careful with them. Okay, so coming up here, we're gonna get magic. We only use magic for like one item in this game, but it's really worth it, because it's like the most broken thing in this game, and it's, it's so incredibly just wow. Um, and that, that's going to bring us to another really interesting change that Grezzo, the guys who made this game, somehow made. Uh, but we'll get to that a bit later. This is a great time for some donations if you have them. Well, we have one from Jarvitz, $75, saying, Hey, Ben, good luck from all of us who used to or currently play Ocarina of Time 3D. I wish I could be there in person to cheer you on, but I got a new job and have no vacation. Everyone keep doing amazing there. Also, this is your reminder to do the thing you told me to remind you to do. I hope that's not too late. Can you repeat that? What was that? This do is your reminder to do the thing you told me to remind you to do. Do the thing? I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> uh, thanks, Jarvis. Uh, thank you, Jarvis. Uh, but I don't think I remember what you're talking about. Wow, we have $500 from Miryafa. I love AGDQ and gotta donate every time. This goes to Runner's Choice. Ben, what's your choice? Oh, what, what was the incentive again? I'm sorry. <laughs> $500, it's Runner's Choice. So what would you like the money to go to? Can't, uh, can't, what's coming want? up soon? I don't know, kill the animals? Um, <laughs> coming up next is Borderlands 2. Uh, there's a $3,000 donation for incentive for Help Face McShooty. Put, and, it, put it to that. And 3,000 for a glitch exhibition. Uh, put it to the to the three thousand dollar one. They're both three thousand dollars, but you want help face McShooty. <laughs> the, the first one. The help. I'm, the first one. Okay. Help face McShooty just got five hundred bucks. Okay. <clears throat> Two hundred dollars from Strawberry. Hi, AGQ. Another year, another chance to show the world that 3DS Zelda is best Zelda. Shout out to a link between Worlds community and to the Ben Stevens slide. <laughs> Have we just seen the Ben Stevens slide? Okay, so I'm doing a trick here called uh, Navi Dive. 
Uh, basically, it's the same thing as the, the triple sword thing, uh, where if you slash a sword three times and then you put it away, um, you take a big step back. But if you use Navi, she like does that. And then you fall in the water, and then, uh, and then yeah, there you go. It basically works the same if you've ever seen Navi dive in the original Ocarina of Time, where while you're in the cutscene where Navi's talking to you, um, the water doesn't have any collision, so you just fall to the bottom. Yep, basically. And uh, it's, it's, it's really easy. If, uh, if you have this game and you know, you're, you're playing along at home, you're uh, keeping up. Some of you are probably ahead of me. Um, <laughs> uh, but let's say you're not. Let's say you're still in Kokiri Forest. That's like the easiest way to escape the forest early on in the game. So right here, uh, I'm going to grab a Deku stick. That's because I'm a baby. Uh, and I'm going to grab Deku nuts, and that's because I need them. Uh, I technically don't need to get another Deku stick, but there's a trick coming up, and if I mess it up, it's like not good. So I just grabbing it for safety. Okay, here's another triple slash. Normally, oh, okay, that angle must have been off. Okay, this should work. All right, so you go right through that corner, and that skips having to watch King Zora do his thing. I'm sure you all love that. <laughs> It's really fast to watch that cutscene. So, Deku Sticks do this... Uh, all two-handed weapons in this game do something really weird, where when you do a jump slash, um, like, the tip of the sword goes, like, behind your head. And so what's happening... I, I just clipped into Jabu right there. What's happening is... The back of the sword is actually hitting Jabu and sends you like flying backwards. I, it's really not what you think it'd be, but yeah. Okay, so normally you're supposed to use slingshot on that switch, but uh, bombs work. These, those bubbles are called shabombs and they're really annoying. It's really scary because in 100% speedruns of this game now, um, there's a glitch later on that you do and Basically, if you, if you pick up a magic drop, like an item drop, from anything, the run is just, like, dead. Um, and those shabombs drop them a lot. And so you'll just be rolling, a shabomb will hit you, it'll drop magic, it'll fall right on top of you, you'll pick it up, and you lose 45 minutes of your life. It's kind of sad. Um, so Jabu is, like, kind of not a great dungeon. You have to pick up Rudo and just, like, carry her around. There's not really a whole lot you can do at the beginning half of this dungeon. That being said, the most important room of the game is coming up, though. Um, and I will explain why in a second. It's very important. I assure you, this is no laughing matter, okay? So there's an Octorok in the next room. Um, and he's going to shoot uh, a projectile at me. And I'm going to do a trick called a Mega Flip off of it. And if I miss it, I don't lose any time, but... Like, I'll be ashamed of myself. <laughs> so I have to get this. Uh-oh. No! Uh. <laughs> All right, I can redeem myself. All right, I can redeem myself here. All right, so if, uh, if Rudo, if you're in the idle animation, Rudo can make this really weird noise. It's completely random, but hopefully she'll do it. Come on, do it, do it, do it. Ah, uh, she didn't do it. All right, I still have a chance. Come on, make the noise. Come on. Come on. Oh, she's not doing it for me. Oh, oh. The run's dead. <laughs> oh. How disappointing is that? I, that angle scared me a little bit. This backwalk is not really that scary, but it's really scary. So You can fall in one of those holes, and that's like really bad. All right, I have to make sure I equip Deku Nuts right now, because when I get in the next room, there's a text box that's going to appear. Uh, and if that's up, I can't pause and stuff. OK. So Deku Nuts, that's the reason I got them. It's really good for this room. You can stun all these guys. Uh, and that's also pretty much the last we're going to see of Rudo for a while. We'll see her at the end of the dungeon, and we'll briefly pass by her. But we're basically ditching her, uh, which is for the best, you know. 
Also, for some reason in that room, uh, I don't know why Grezzo would do it, but in original Ocarina of Time, there's four of those stingrays, and in this game, there's only three for some reason. Yeah, they change really weird stuff like that. Um, there's just really weird spots where they like. There's a spot in the grave where you get Sun Song where they just added a door and they moved the keys around in there. I, they do strange stuff like that. Okay, coming up here is the same trick I was trying to do off an Octorok, except this one matters. Nice. Nice. Whoa. All right, so that skips approximately 70% nice. of uh, Jabua Jabua. Uh, shout outs to ZFG again. Okay, and we can do. Oh, oh wow, that messed up. I didn't talk about it, but I. Remember that trick I was talking about with the blue switches in the Dongo's Cavern? Well, that was the trick I just did, um, and it left that door open for a little bit. Normally, you have to pick up a box and put it on top of the switch, but we have no way of getting a box over there, so we can do that. There's also a strat you can do found by Fireblaze where you can roll to the door from the switch and open it before it closes, but it's like frame perfect and the angle is really weird and I don't like it, so yeah. Also, in the room before this, I did a strat where normally you have to climb up the vines and then hit the switch, but you can just snipe it with some cool side hop stuff. Okay, Baronade. Uh, this boss is pretty easy, except when it's not. Uh, I guess that's a good way to put it. Okay, nice. So this should go well. Okay, so normally you have to wait for her to spin around and she does this annoying attack. Uh, but if you boomerang her just as she starts the next phase, you can stun her and then use Deku Nuts to uh, kill all of the little jellyfish things. Did you just assume that hearts gender? What was that? <laughs> I said, did you just assume that hearts gender? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I was thinking that too. <laughs> you called me out on it. Um, so basically that. <laughs> you can clap for that. That was a good fight. Uh, basically, the point, uh, the strat for that fight is you, at the end of it, you want to be as close to the middle of the room as possible because... Uh, the blue orb can spawn in three places, and if you're in the center of the room, you will optimally be closest to whichever one spawns. It's, and it's always the spot furthest away from you. There's something really weird that happens during this cutscene. I don't think I've ever had it happen to me. I've seen a few people, but sometimes the cutscene like goes way faster than it should. Uh, I've never seen it, so it's probably not going to happen now. Another great time for donations. Well, maybe we'll do a sponsorship. Chrono GG sells one awesome game every day, and proceeds from GDQ featured titles will benefit the Prevent, Prevent Cancer Foundation. So check them out at chronogg slash AGDQ. We do have some donations, of course. The Coops donated $200. First time donating to such a great event. Big thank you to all of those involved. To all the runners, looking forward to seeing what you do in order to get through those games quickly. Also, I'm on team Save the Frames for this one. Got to go fast. Yeah, I agree, the Coops. Got to go fast. <clears throat> All right. So we've finished two dungeons now, Jabu and DC. So now we're going to get the next item, do some shenanigans, and go beat the rest. So I was talking about how we use magic for a really broken item. Um, you know... People always talk about, oh yeah, when I, oh, that's way too early. Wow, way to just waste a bomb. People always talk about, oh yeah, you know, when I played this game as a kid. Uh, you probably don't remember using this next item too often as a kid, but uh, it's really good. Like, oh shoot. I, 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 I cannot explain with words how, how just absolutely devastating this item is to this game. It just, it, it destroys it. Um, and so you're going to see some of that coming up. And probably the next uh, five minutes, I'm going to do something with Furore's Wind that's going to really be just like, if you've never seen an Ocarina of Time 3D run then, then, and you're just about to leave, like stick around for five minutes. Something cool is about to happen. <laughs> Uh, something I didn't mention earlier, sometimes it's fast to, to save the game and quit. 
it warps you back to, if you're in a dungeon, it takes you back to the beginning of the dungeon. Uh, if you're just in the overworld, it takes you back to uh, your original spawn point, which as child is your house, and as adult, it's uh, the Temple of Time. So I'm going to be doing that right now to go back to Kokiri Forest. So normally, as you can see, I have uh, two of the spiritual stones. Normally you need three to go adult, but uh, I don't really feel like doing the Deku Tree right now because that dungeon's boring. <laughs> it's, it's not boring, actually. Uh, it's a little boring as a child, but when we get there as an adult, it's going to be pretty wild. Oops, spoilers. <laughs> okay, I'm doing a trick here. Nice. All right. So this is called ledge cancel. Basically, if you have a bomb hit you while shielding, as you climb up a little ledge, you can kind of just walk through stuff. So, see ya. <laughs> For it, it, I don't know how to explain it. It like gives you the same properties you have when you climb ledges, and so rounded collision like doesn't affect you. Wow, I'm bad. There we go. With that ledge cancel, is it? all actors, or is it just the ones with rounded collision? It's only rounded collision, so stuff like boulders, NPCs, uh, King Zora, who's kind of an NPC, but... Okay. So it's actually not that bad that I took that half-hearted damage there, failing that Hess, because... Um, as you've seen already in this game, dying is not that bad, and we're going to be taking use of it again. Okay, right here. This is why Furore's Wind is so good. So I just did a glitch. Normally you can't use Furore's Wind outside of dungeons. It's exclusively used inside of dungeons, but there's a glitch you can do called Restricted Items that allows you to use items you're not normally allowed to use in places you're not normally allowed to use them. So I'm gonna buy the Hylian Shield here. Now this can go for anywhere from 75 to 40 rupees. Hopefully it's not too much. Okay, good. Uh, if it's not much money, then you have enough to buy some extra bombs. Um, so let me explain restricted items. Basically, if you look down at the bottom screen, you can see that um, most of the items I can't use, they're like dimmed out. But Zelda's letter, I can use that item. And so, oh shoot. If you switch an item that you can't use with an item you can use, you have one frame, one single frame, where if you use the item you can't use, you can use it. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I don't know. It's really bad. It's another great example of Grezzo changing little things that make really big differences. Um, they change the item menu, it's bad. Hey, here's another thing they changed that's really good for speedruns. They added a save and quit feature. Wow, oh, I'm dead. Oh, I'm going to quit the game because I'm so bad. Haha. -ha. So I entered that grotto right there, and I died at the same time, and then I quit the game. So basically what the game is trying to do is it's trying to load the grotto, but it also tries to load the title screen at the same time. And so now I'm at the Lakeside Laboratory, and I'm going to return for Rosewind. And basically what the game is doing is it thinks I'm on the title screen, but it thinks I'm still playing the game. And so when you go to the title screen, it tries to add the value 4. Why 4? That's just the number. And so every time I enter a loading zone now, it adds 4. And so now I'm here. Nice. Wow, that's a hard mega flip. Nice. So now I'm at Shadow Temple. Uh, Apparently, it was hiding in the Hyrule Market all along. I don't know how I got there. Who put that there? All right, so now that we're here, we might as well just go get hover boots, right? No one does this strat. I don't know why. If you jump slash through those, uh, those text walls, you get a little extra distance. It saves some time. But I don't see anyone but me doing it. All right, so we're going to fight Dead Hand. Something really weird about Dead Hand is that it doesn't matter what sword you have. Uh, if you have the Master Sword as child, which, yes, that's possible, um, it doesn't do the, the damage of a Master Sword. Dead Hand actually checks whether you're child or adult to see how much damage you do to him. So we're going to kill him, get our hover boots. Something I should also mention, if you notice right now, the bottom screen doesn't look quite like it should, and that's because... It still thinks we're on the title screen, and normally that's how the bottom screen looks on the title screen. Um, and so I can't actually use any items right now, except for the ones that are on my X and Y button. Other than that, I can't use the touch screen for anything. So I have to make do with the items that I have, which are Furore's Wind and Bombs. 
Luckily, in this case, they are completely sufficient. So I'm going to return for Rose Wind, go back to market, and hey, you know, archery is a lot of fun. Let's play some archery. Except not. We're here now. Yay! <laughs> Uh, and we're going to enter Temple of Time. wonder where this will take us. Oh, it took us to Temple of Time. That's nice. Except, where's Link? Oh, he's right there. Perfect. <laughs> Good thought. So that was the Door of Time skip. Uh, in this game, they really didn't want people getting past the door of time. Like, they really didn't want it. In Ocarina of Time on N64, there's a little crack on the side of it that's just enough, if you have enough speed, that you can go through it. In this game, they doubled the size of the door. It extends out of bounds, like, the actual size of the door that's visible. So, like, there's no way around it. It's, it's really impenetrable, except if you wrong warp past it. So, that's what we just did there. Um, and I should mention, the fact that that Dwarf Time Skip works is, is it's a miracle. It, it's so convenient because, so you, you'll notice when I picked up the Master Sword, remember how I said every loading zone, it adds four? Well, when I picked up the Master Sword, it actually didn't do that. I canceled the Death Hole glitch because that little cutscene that played when you enter Temple of Time where it's like, hey, look, the Temple of Time, and it pans around, it's like, ooh, it's pretty. Um, that cutscene actually cancels the glitch, so picking up the Master Sword took me exactly where it was supposed to take me, and the game is completely back to normal. The fact that that cutscene is there is sheer coincidence, and it, this would not be possible without it. It's insane. That being said, because we need that cutscene to do it, Dwarf Time Skip is a one-way trip. You can't go back once you do it. I mean, there are ways, but you have to jump through some pretty lengthy hoops to make it happen. Also, um, because text mashing is so fast in this game, there's actually parts of this cutscene where you're kind of just standing around awkwardly staring at each other, like right here. It's really funny. It's <laughs> like, oh, how's your day? I see you've grown, Link. <laughs> <laughs> you've been in here for quite some time. Just make you wait a little longer. This cutscene takes forever. Speaking of cutscenes, there's a really great one coming up that we skipped earlier, but uh, it's going to come back. But uh, it's, it's a lot funnier this way, I promise. All right, light medallion. So let's do a tally here. We've still only beaten two dungeons. If I had to take a guess, we're probably somewhere like 55 minutes in. My estimate's like two hours. You're probably wondering, wow, we've only beaten two dungeons. We're like halfway through the run. When is he going to get to the other six? Don't worry, we'll get there. <laughs> I know you're sitting at home and there's sweat dripping down your face. You're saying, is he going to do it? I'm going to do it. Don't worry. That was a pretty good guess on the time, by the way. I know this game pretty well. <laughs> we, uh, we, we, we get along pretty well. That's consistency. Okay. So Sheik's here. She's going to talk to us. Um, It'll be a good time for donations in a second, but I, I want to watch this cutscene real quick. This cutscene's not all that interesting, but the one after this is, uh, is, is quite good. And this one's not, not that long. But there's definitely a lot of cutscenes in this part of the run. Okay, so when we did Dwarf Time Skip, there's a cutscene like right as you enter this room, and uh, we're going to fall right into it, where Navi, like, goes over, and here it is right now. She's like, dude, look, it's the Master Sword. But uh, the Master Sword's not there anymore. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's a little funky. <laughs> there it is, the legendary blade. <laughs> there it is, the Master Sword. All right. Um, so now what I want to go do is go get the hook shot. Um, so I'm going to make my way to do that. I'll probably do some Hesses, but you already know what those are, so good time for donations. All right. Well, now would be a good time to point out we have some uh, donation incentives during this run. 
Um, they're going to be up at the end of the run, so only during the next hour you have time to donate for these things. And some of them are great, like a dark link, a 18 by 20 inch art print, uh, lost print, uh, Lost Woods art print, and a DS Lite Triforce edition <laughs> autographed by our current speedrunner, uh, Ben Stevens. Uh, so check those out. Um, Speaking of the Zelda run, Elf Spit donated $100 saying, love AGDQ and especially the Zelda runs. Been a fan of The Legend of Zelda since the original came out. That's a long time ago, Elf Spit. We have a $1,000 donation from Shane Gill. Huge respect to all of those taking part in AGDQ. This donation goes towards naming the Mudkip Waluigi in Pokemon Emerald. <laughs> Got any ideas, Fox? Um. <laughs> so I made a little mistake. Uh, uh, hopefully I'll find a way to I, fix it. <laughs> um. Can I still read some more donations? Ah, uh, yes, you're free to read more donations. Okay. Fall Star uh, gave us $100 saying, great to see a Zelda game this early in the marathon. Much love to the Zelda speedruns community and all the Saturday night bingo runners. Anonymous donated $150 saying, we watch GDQ every year. Thanks to the community for getting together to support such a wonderful cause. Thank you, Anonymous. Jimmy Jack 888 donated $150, saying, My friend beat cancer recently, thanks to early detection. Hoping this can go towards helping others. Thanks to everyone who's involved in this great event. Yeah, thank you, Jimmy Jack 888. Mmm, 43. Good time. That's pretty much the fastest you can get. All right. You forgot. Okay, so now I'm going to go and uh, beat the forest temple. All right, there we go. Nice test. Okay. So I made a bit of a routing error. Uh, I was supposed to uh, set Furore's Wind after picking up the Master Sword. Um, so I'm going to have to improvise just a little bit. Uh, it means I'm going to have to do things slightly out of order, and I'm going to have to add a few steps to some things I was normally going to do. Uh, hopefully it should be OK. This test is really cool when you get it well. So like I said, dwarf time skip, it's kind of only one way. And it's funny that I went through all of that to talk about it, because I'm actually going to have to do something. Oh, yeah, that's a hook shot jump. Hey, look at that. We're going to do another one right here. Whee! <laughs> And they said this game wasn't broken. <laughs> All right, so now we're just hanging out. All right, I got to be a little quiet here because I got to hear something. Okay, so you can hear when you're walking on the wood of the tunnels. So that's what I'm using to navigate my way through the Lost Woods, completely unloaded. Uh, that was one too many. Okay. Okay. So now we're in Sacred Forest Meadow. 
Whoa. Come on. Get out of the way. Okay, so there's a, kind of a cool trick jump here. Let's see if I can get it. Nice. All right. So you can use that to skip pretty much all of Sacred Forest Meadow. Normally, you'd have to go through these mazes again. Fox, opening door of time cutscene, that's inside a Temple of Time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, from, from Market? Yeah. Okay. All right, I'll just have to do that then. Okay. Uh, normally, right here, there's a cutscene trigger for the Minuet of Forest. Um, but if you kill yourself right as you enter the cutscene by shielding damage, um, you actually can just skip right past it. Okay, so that gave me the, uh, the Minuet of Forest. So you didn't see me get it, but I have it. Um, and now I'm going to go get another song. I'm going to go get the Nocturne of Shadow. I'm um, sorry, not the Nocturne. I'm going to get the Bolero of Fire. So I'm going to come back through this way to get to Goron City. Okay, so this guy right here, he's going to give me the Goron tunic. Okay. Again, this guy's text is really long on N64, but it's quite short in, in this game, so we don't really have to worry about his text bothering us too much. I think it's funny that he's named Warm Ham because you're named Warm Ham. Isn't that really convenient? I can't believe... Oh, that's what it means. You guys must have obviously, in the audience, known that this guy's name was Warm Ham and you wanted us to share names. <laughs> that's got to be it. Okay. All right. When we hit ourselves... Oh, wow. I got the, the frame perfect one anyway, so I didn't need to. Woo. Nice. Okay. So now we're entering Death Mountain Crater. And uh, I want to do more damage to myself, so I'm going to fall in here. I get hit by this bomb. Okay. I should have taken damage by falling in Goron City. That would have been faster. Okay. Uh, oh, that's bad. Don't do that. Just kidding. Okay. So I'm going to put this bomb here. And, wow, what do you know, it happened again. I need to get better at this game. <laughs> okay. Both the Minuet of Forest cutscene skip that he did and that cutscene skip also work exactly the same um, in normal Ocarina of Time. In normal Ocarina of Time, you have more options of how to do those cutscene skips, but you can do them exactly the way Ben just did as well. All right, so now I'm going to go beat the Forest Temple. Come on. Ah, I can't get it. Thank you. Hookshotting that Woo. stump is the hardest trick in the game. That's the hardest trick in the game, too. Yeah, we can clap for that. That's a hard trick. Okay, so now I'm in the Forest Temple, and... Uh, I am going to set Furore's Wind in this first room. And uh, this dungeon is kind of long, I guess. Um, you know, you have to free all the pose to do the elevator thing, and you have to... Um, you know, go get the bow um, and the boss key. Uh, and there's this cutscene here. So, I mean, as far as this game goes, it's, it's a pretty long dungeon. Definitely one of the longer. Um, so first I'm going to go over to this room here. And... Uh, there's a nice corner here. Okay. 
What do you think? That was pretty long, right? <laughs> you think I'm kidding. That's actually one of the longer dungeons. <laughs> Okay, Phantom Ganon, he is a really cool strat if you're good. You gotta be, you gotta be pretty good to get this strat. Um, it's kind of difficult. Uh, it's not the worst thing. Uh, but basically, the first phase, uh, there's nothing really much you can do to make that faster, but the second phase is a little bit more difficult. Um, there's a way that you can stun him before he attacks you. Normally, you have to play tennis with him. But uh, if you're good with the hook shot, you can stun him and then attack him while he's looking away. It's kind of tricky. Uh, normally, I don't get it perfectly because it's pretty hard. But hopefully, I'll at least get it like a little bit. Oh, one more. I'm bad at counting. OK. Uh, you can tell these two apart because the one I want to hit is a little bit lighter. All right, let's see if I can get this. Nice. 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 Woo! That feels so good when you get it right. Okay, normally I wouldn't grab the heart container here, but I'm a little scared because of the route changes I'm going to have to make, so I think I'm going to grab it. Fox, it's, uh, it's from Market, right? Not from Save Warp? From Market, yes. Okay, I think I'll do that then. Okay, so after this dungeon, there's a cutscene when you enter the Blue Warp, and we don't like cutscenes. So we will not watch the cutscene. And to do that, uh, I'm going to be doing a dumb trick. OK. Nice. All right, so this should work. Nice. All right. So that restricted item glitch I did, it's uh, frame perfect. And if you do it out of a side hop onto the edge of a blue warp, you can write as it's warping away, return for Rose Wind, and you get the medallion if you went into my inventory. If you went into my inventory, you'd see that I had the medallion, but, uh, but I didn't watch the cutscene. And uh, I, I made that look pretty easy. At least, I hope I made it look easy. Did that look easy? That looks pretty easy. OK, it's not. It's really dumb and hard. It's and really not. It's not a fun trick. OK, so now I'm in Temple of Time. And I'm going to leave Temple of Time. And I'm going to go back in Temple of Time. Um, and I'm going to do another restricted items to set Furore's Wind here. Now, this seems weird, and it is a little weird. But this will become important in uh, a couple minutes. All right, now we're going to go back to the Fire Temple. And that's the next dungeon we're going to be tackling. This is actually one of the longer dungeons. And uh, the fact that I made the routing error that I made earlier um, is going to make it a lot longer than it ought to be, which is kind of unfortunate. But uh, after I beat this dungeon, everything that I've already done is going to fix itself. So. I just have to make it through this, which hopefully I'm a little unfamiliar with it because uh, this is not exactly what I practice, but it should be fine. <laughs> Plus, Fire Temple uh, is actually a pretty cool dungeon. I like it. It's very technical. And uh, you'll get to see some cool tricks you otherwise would not be able to see. But first, we've got to talk to Darunia. Again, he's just always getting in the way. Okay. Uh, something also kind of small I never talked about. Um, hover boots and iron boots, you can put them on really fast in this game. On the original game, you would just have to uh, pause the game, go into the menu, put them on. You know, It was really slow and really bad, especially in the water temple, um, where you had to put on iron boots like a lot. But uh, here, it's, they, they added it as like an equipable item. And that's actually really good. Uh, if you were watching earlier and you saw me do that trick where I called it a hookshot jump, where you go like really high up with the hookshot, um, 
that actually utilizes the fact that when you put on the boots from the item, you do this cool little hoppy thing. I don't know, it's like this cute little animation. Um, but the fact that the animation happens cancels the animation of the hook shot, and so it just sends you like really high, I don't know. But um, that animation most of the time is kind of slow, so I will usually do things to skip it. Um, and by that, I'll, if you put on the hover boots the same frame, you do something else, like rolling, opening doors, talking to an NPC, you skip the animation. So all over the place I'm using that, and you probably don't even notice it. So it's little optimizations like that that you know, really separate some of the best runners from all the other ones. OK, so I'm going to grab some keys here so that I can move forward. Oh, don't hit me. Uh, Fire Temple is kind of tricky because um, there's a lot of things that want to hurt you. Uh, and at this point in the run, we obviously don't have too much health. So as far as health management goes, this dungeon is a little bit scary. Uh, it's not the worst thing ever, but you definitely have to be pretty careful, especially in the later parts of the dungeon where things uh, get a little crazier. But at the beginning, it's pretty, it's pretty normal as far as what was intended. Uh, there's actually a glitch that lets you skip one of these keys, but it requires Din's Fire. And I don't have Din's Fire, so I can just run through and grab the keys. They don't take that long. It saves about 30 seconds to do the skip. Uh, so it's not a huge deal. Obviously not worth going to go get Din's Fire just to save like 30 seconds there. Okay. Woo, I love that. That looks so cool. This next room is, I'd say it's probably the scariest room in the dungeon. Uh, it's not that bad, but there's a couple tricks. They look pretty cool when you do them right. OK, so first off, um, there's a block here. Normally, you'd push it, but I'm going to do a trick to skip it called a mega jump. OK. Uh, nice. All right, so right here, I'm using the home menu to, uh, to pick out individual frames so that I can do frame perfect tricks. Uh, that trick actually has a two-frame window, but it's technically frame perfect. Oh, and also, I'm, whoa, ah. That there is called a ledge clip. Uh, if you target a wall at the same frame that you grab a ledge, you actually clip through it. And I use a bomb to get down here, which skips probably about two minutes of the dungeon. That trick right there, actually, there was an old method to do it, and it was... It was really bad. It was something. I, I guess you could say that. I, it was awful. Um, I don't even want to begin to explain it. it. It was probably the hardest thing in the run back in the day. But uh, then ledge clipping was found. Like, how long? It was that, that was like two years ago or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that trick took like so long to find. That was something that should have been found like years ago. I'm going to grab this heart just for safety. Uh, or, or I'm not going to grab it. I don't know. <laughs> That's fine, you know. OK. All right, so this room has a big fire maze. Um, what I can do here is there's two different ways I'm going to go for the fast one, in which if you do a really fast test, you can. All right, I missed it. I'll go for the slow one then. Um, what's this guy doing? All right, so I'm going to, nope, get out of my way. All right, so there's that firewall there. Normally, you'd need to go around to the other side and use a key to get past that, but you can actually just roll past it. It's really easy. Uh, it only works on that one, though, because it's like angled weird on the wall. OK. Pick up some more bombs. OK. Flare Dancer is pretty easy mini boss. Link's got hops. <laughs> this is another spot where power crowd stabbing would like is used on N64, but like we obviously can't do that, so as stated before, jump slashing suffices. 
All right, if you hop on this elevator as he's dying, you can kind of ride it up during the cutscene of the door opening back up. Okay. And once we're up here, we will get to the Megaton Hammer, which um, you need the Megaton Hammer to beat Volvagia. There's actually a way to get to the boss key really early and uh, get to the boss room, but there's no way to kill Volvagia without the Megaton Hammer. So it's essential that we get it. Um, but once once we get the hammer, it won't be long before we're we're back to uh, we're, uh, we're we're back to the boss room. I promise. Okay, this is a little scary because if we fall there, it's kind of dumb. Okay, so the hammer. Yeah, so we don't end up using this item very much. Okay. Oh no, I fell. Oh wait, I actually did fall. Uh, what do I do about that? Okay, back up, back up. <laughs> that door's locked. I got this, don't worry. I watch CFG fail this all the time. <laughs> uh, I can do a mega flip here. Okay, nice. Wait, was that the one I needed to get over? Yeah, no, I'm good, I'm good. I got this. This run, this run, this is all full of improvisations. You're seeing all kind of stuff you'd never normally see. Don't hit me. Okay. Ooh. That case oh was my a bit goodness. scary. So I'm going to do a ledge clip here. And then, all right, that puts me in the boss room. Okay, Vavaji is, uh, he's actually a pretty scary boss. Um, his fire attack does like, Four or three damage, I don't remember. It's really devastating. If it hits me, I'll, I'll die. Um, I don't want to do that. This is like one of the few times in the game I actually don't want to die. I know, that doesn't happen very often, but. <laughs> okay. So something interesting about Volvagia is there's actually two Volvagias in this fight, even though obviously there's only one. There's the one that flies around the room, and then there's the one that sticks her head out like this. Um, so the reason I'm putting bombs down is because I'm hitting the one that flies around the room because she still has an active hurt box that uh, we can get her with. Uh, this is kind of scary. Okay, good. And so what I'm doing is I'm skipping her flying around the room by hitting her with bombs. Okay. Nice, all right, good. Uh, there's a little bit of RNG in that fight because if she pops out of the first hole, um, you're, you're screwed, there's nothing you can do. You just kinda have to you know, do whatever. So a little bit of a scary boss, but luckily that's over. Okay. Um, so that trick I did early in Forest Temple to skip the cutscene, I'm going to do it again here. Um, but it's going to do something a little bit different. Okay, so I'm going to save in case I mess this up. Wait for Volvazia to go away. Okay. i got to put away the hammer. Okay. Please put that away. Oh, I hit the warp. Whoops. Okay. Uh, so I have to restart and go back to the warp. That's why I saved. Um, oh, I guess that means I need to go get the boss key, too. Okay. So this is slightly improvised, because like I said, I, I messed something up that's kind of weird, insignificant. But um, So I guess I have to go get the boss key now, um, which will just take a minute. And I'll have to go back to the room. I didn't think about that. Um, so this is actually a trick that you normally wouldn't see in this run. It's called hookshot clipping. It's really useful in 100%, but basically another interesting change that Grezzo made is that the hookshot is just like really overpowered, so you can just go through walls and stuff. I don't know. So I'll just grab the boss key and then save warp out. Okay. The reason I have to save warp there is because otherwise I'd be completely stuck in the room. So... That would be bad. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to the boss room. I'm going to do that trick again, and hopefully this time I'll get it. Like I said, uh, it's, it's not an easy trick. I made it look really easy the first time, but 
the positioning is precise. It's a one frame window. You also have to pause on the item menu at the proper timing. And it's just kind of a brutal trick. And you have to do a lot of them in the run. It's something that definitely discourages a lot of newer runners from playing the game because it's really used so often. So it's kind of bad that you have to do it. But it, it does some really neat stuff. OK. Good. This should work. OK. OK. So like I said, it's going to work like the Forest Temple one I did earlier, but it's going to do something very different. So this is going to take me to Temple of Time, but I'm watching a cutscene. And, and the medallions are on the floor. Yeah, and the medallions are on the floor, you know. The little details, they don't matter as much. Don't worry about those. Uh, so as I was saying before, normally <laughs> we, uh, we wouldn't really have any use for, uh, for, for skipping the Door of Time a second time. But because of what I messed up, wait, didn't I beat the Force Temple? Uh, she's not there right now. Oh, oh, I, <laughs> I need to leave. OK, that's something weird. Sometimes cutscenes don't load. Or actually, I'm in a different map entirely, aren't yeah, I? Yeah, you are. I'm in a completely different map. I didn't think about that. Um, so that's not actually like the real Temple of Time. That's like a fake one. But the door's still open, so that's great. OK, so the reason I had to come back here, uh, it probably would have been a little faster to improvise a slightly different route, but I wanted to do this one because it's really cool. So this cutscene isn't one that you see in speedruns very often, um, but it, it's going to do something for us that's really cool. In Ocarina of Time 3D, they added a boss rush mode where you can go back to Link's house in Kokiri Forest and fight all the bosses again. Um, and so there's something really weird about that boss rush. And the reason I'm bringing it up is because this song, this cutscene right here, it's the thing that unlocks the boss rush um, in Link's house. And so basically, when Grezzo made this game, I guess they didn't know how to like program in loading zones or whatever. And so they kind of just did their own thing. And so since you know they added something completely new to the game, it acts very differently from anything else that you see within the code of the game. Um, and so I'm going to go back to Link's house right now, now that I have the boss gauntlet unlocked. And luckily, I have oh, menu at a forest. So I'm going to go back there. And I'm going to, I'm going to play the boss rush, which seems really weird. But uh, there's actually something very interesting that we can do with it. And uh, you'll see in a minute. It's, it's really, really cool. So this is a good time for donations as I'm trekking along. Well, we've got plenty of donations to read. I want to point out that uh, we've met the donation incentive for Borderlands 2, uh, the glitch exhibition, and we're only $500 away from helping out Face McShooty. <laughs> You've got maybe a half an hour to get those donations in so that we can all help Face McShooty. We have a $300 donation from Kerry. Hello from Final Fantasy XIV's Cactar server. We're all loving AGDQ so far. Shout outs to Decca and Popple and save those animals. If we must, Kerry, if we must. Okay, so now that I'm in here, you can go to Link's bed and do relive a battle. It's gonna open up a menu right here. But the thing is, when you load back into the game, if you put Furore's Wind here using the restricted items glitch. You have no magic. Oh, I don't have any magic. OK. Um, uh, dispel the warp point. You have a warp okay, point. OK, yeah, dispel the warp point. Sleep in the bed. See, I, I got this. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Whoops. OK, so that refills my magic. Incredibly convenient. So I'll go back into the boss rush. And uh, now I'll set for Rosemond. Again, this trick I'm doing right here, where I set for Rosemond, it's a frame perfect trick. And uh, oh, something else I haven't brought up. Um, Ocarina of Time 3D, it runs at 30 frames per second, which is, uh, the original Ocarina of Time runs at 20 frames per second. And so Frame Perfect Trick is a whole nother ball game in this game. It's, it's significantly harder. You have way less time to do stuff. Um, Frame Perfect Tricks really aren't all that difficult in N64 Ocarina of Time. Uh, it sounds like, you're like, wow, 1 20th of a second? You know, that sounds like not very much time. but 
the human eye is actually, and, and muscle memory, is actually uh, very much capable of picking out a single frame. Majora's Mask does a trick, actually, where they, they have to hit the pause button like on a single frame, and it's, it's kind of dumb, but like, people have gotten really good at it. But 30 frames per second, that's it's a very different thing. Um, so, if you've noticed, I'm back in Forest Temple. That may seem odd, but I'm about to do probably one of the most insane things that has happened in this game ever, and it's really cool. So I'm going to go back to the boss room, if I can get this trick. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is kind of finicky. OK. I'm going to go back to the boss room. And I'm going to do that Ferrer's Wind trick again. Um, but this time, there's kind of a catch to it. So this is really hard, by the way. It might take me a few tries. OK. All right, got the first part. Wait, I might not be close enough. Ha ha. Sometimes that happens. I don't know. That setup is like really consistent, but sometimes it doesn't work. Okay. All right, got the first part. I might not be close enough again. All right, good. All right, so now I have one frame to return for Rose win. So hopefully I can get this frame. One, two, three, four, five. I need to buffer one frame. Oh my. <laughs> yes. Nice. Oh my goodness. That Thanks. feels so good. <laughs> Woo! Okay, so before this run, I was practicing that trick for like three hours, and I was not getting very good consistency. I was so nervous about doing that. Um, so you're probably wondering what's going on right now. Um, and it's good because I have a lot of time to explain what's going on. Link is going to fall out of bounds 14 times, he's going to void out. Now you're probably wondering, why 14, okay? Well, what happened was, is I just wrong warped into the title screen. So, <laughs> let me try and wrap your head around this. You know that opening cinematic, you know, that really iconic one where it's like the song plays and Link rides by on Epona and it's like the first time he booted up the game as a kid, you're like, wow, this is so cool. Well, we're in that right now. We're playing, oh, I jump slash, whoops. <laughs> we're playing in that right now. And there's something really interesting about this state of game is that, all right, so you know how you have like the, the file select, there's like file one, there's file two, there's file three, okay? Well, there's actually another file in the game, completely already made up. It's called the debug file, and that's what the cutscene during the title screen is playing. It's playing this debug file. Now, this debug file has like all of the items. It has 14 hearts, it has all the medallions, and it's just weird. So now I have like every single item in the game, um, and I have eight keys in every single dungeon. I have all of the boss keys. I have all the maps. It's just crazy, OK? <laughs> so the reason I need to fall so many times is because if having 14 hearts is really great, but uh, I need to die here because I can't pause the game with the start or select button. I have to wait until I die. And then I can do something called zombie walking, where basically when you're dead and you spawn out of bounds, um, you can roll and side hop and backflip. And so I'm going to do that. There's some water in front of me. Uh, this is the last one, by the way. There's some water in front of me. I'm going to roll into the water. When I hit the water, I'm going to die. I'm going to save the game. And then I will have saved the debug file onto the first file. A little confusing, I know. But uh, it's, it's pretty cool. So this was actually found by the Wayfaring Fox, who's sitting right behind me on the couch. Um, I don't know how he comes up with this stuff. <laughs> hey, look, we were just there. <laughs> so as you can see, my file looks pretty weird right now. OK? So now we're going to go beat the rest of the dungeons now that we have all the items. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I am, I am so glad that that trick happened first try. That is like. Definitely one of the hardest things that happened in this game. And, and I talked about the home buffering method right there, um, but I didn't really get into the severity of it. Um, home buffering is really bad in this game. I only do it because it gives you a marginal chance of basically saving first uh, frame perfect tricks. Right there, when I did the trick, I was one frame early. And basically, when you're one frame early and you have to buffer a one frame input, it's 
almost impossible. It rarely ever happens. But I managed to do it. I managed to save it somehow by the grace of God. Um, something else I should mention there. Uh, all of the cutscenes that I had previously watched are back. That's why the Moblin cutscene played there again. Um, but also the Minuet of Forests was back again, but I actually skipped the cutscene because playing the Minuet of Forests skips the Minuet of Forests cutscene by chance. Uh, and that's because when you load into the, the area, the warp song, like the cutscene of you like floating in on the particles or whatever, it somehow takes priority, and so the cutscene tries to play, but it like... It gets shut down. Okay, so as you can see, I have like a ton of items now. Um, so it makes the ladder dungeons way easier. Okay, so remember how I accidentally gave you, you probably don't, but if you do, I gave you a little spoiler early on in the run that we're gonna be doing Deku Tree as adult, uh, and that's what's about to happen. I also set Furore's Wind in Lost Woods. Um, just like setting Furore's Wind in Temple of Time seems a little weird, but it has its reasons. Okay. So this is another frame perfect trick. It's actually two frames, but it's frame perfect. Hard to explain, but there's different ways you can buffer inputs to make some two frame tricks, one frame. That's called a hover slide. Um, it lets you cover really big distances. So normally I'm not able to walk here, uh, but since I do, I can jump over the loading trigger for the Deku Tree. And so because of that, his mouth is usually closed but it's just non-existent when the area is unloaded. So you can just back walk in. So, this is also a longer dungeon. Uh, let's count how many rooms it is. Okay, that was one. And this is two. I thought we had enough falling. <laughs> and we're in the boss. <laughs> I feel so bad for Link. That's gotta be horrifying. <laughs> okay, um, Aaron told me not to fail this, so I better not fail this. Um, basically, Deku Nuts don't stun Goma for very long, so I don't have much time. Okay, good. Right. <laughs> That's really not hard, but I managed to mess it up a lot. <laughs> okay. So, hey, look, another blue warp. Guess what we're going to do? <laughs> okay. Oh, I missed it. All right. That sucks. I did save, right? Yeah, you did. You did. Okay. Whew. <laughs> Sometimes I forget. Uh, that only wastes about a minute. And plus, we get to see Link fall some more. Poor guy. Uh, so we got to make our way back to the boss room and do that again. Again, this trick is really hard. Um, just to give you the scope of how difficult it is, the position in which you stand uh, is, is pretty not lenient because... Uh, you, you need to be right on the edge of the warp when you side hop. And other than that, pausing for the item menu is not too precise, but it's definitely not trivial. And then the actual glitch is frame perfect. So, you know, it's, it's by no means a free trick. This is very difficult. Uh, all right, let's go for it again. All right. All right, if I'm close enough, this will work. I'm not close enough, okay. If I'm close enough, this will work. I should be close enough this time. Okay, good. All right, uh, just like the Fire Temple Warp, this one's gonna do something pretty weird. It's gonna take us uh, to the Desert Colossus. So now we're here. Uh, guess which dungeon we're gonna be doing next? <laughs> I heard water, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> you need to go back and play this game. Because <laughs> uh, this is not the water temple. Uh, next time we're gonna do is spirit temple. Uh, and well, we already have a pretty good start. You know, we're at the silver gauntlet, so 
I mean, <laughs> it's funny because I, I was talking about earlier about how we have to get the Goron bracelet and how like there's no way to skip it. Um, when you wrong warp into the debug file, it gives you the Goron bracelet, which is like this huge slap in the face. I hate it so much. So uh, we could pick up the silver gauntlets, but there's no reason to pick them up because we don't need them. Um, so what we're going to do is they made this collision really weird on 3D. I don't know why. So we can just do this. And hey, now we're on the other side of the dungeon. Uh, we don't need the mirror shield chest because we already have the mirror shield from the debug file. Okay. So I'm pretty low on health right now. I actually don't want to pick up too many hearts here because if I do, I have a lot of hearts right now. And later on in the run, I'm going to want to kill myself again because, you know, that's kind of how this game works. Okay. Uh, what would happen if uh, you were to get the mirror shield chest again? You would just have the mirror shield again. It's actually funny. When you open up those really big chests that you already have uh, items to, Link kind of just like kicks them open and it looks really weird. He's just casually like, yeah, I'm just going to kick this chest open. Normally there's that big like cinematic like doo 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 doo. But instead it's just like, ah, I already have this. <laughs> uh, something else, I mentioned it earlier, but I have eight keys in the dungeon. So instead of going to get a key in a couple rooms ago, I, I just um, used one of the keys I already had. And even though I have the boss key, that's really boring. So I'm just going to do this. Uh, this height's a little bit sketchy. This should work. Okay, good. That was a little low, my height there. Yeah, that was good. That was pretty close. Really nice. Hookshot jumping is just one of those tricks that's like, wow. I, I honestly uh, don't really know. <laughs> like, it's just so weird. It's really good, though. Um, it's funny, there's actually this huge debate about what the name of that trick is called. And, it's a uh, hookshot jump. You heard That's it from me. It is a hookshot jump, and it goes by no other name. <laughs> doom jump? Especially not doom jump. Don't say that word. <laughs> Don't say that word. Okay, so Naboru. This boss is pretty standard. You really don't want to get hit here because she does four hearts of damage. And that is enough to kill me at this point. So you kind of have to keep your distance. This boss is made a little trickier by the fact that power crowd stabbing no longer works. Also, her axe hitbox is a lot better than it is on N64, in which you can kind of just stand at her waist and crowd stab her, and she'll just like, she won't hit you. She'll like clear your head. Um, but in this game, it's, it's not that easy, so we have to be a little more careful. This is a good time for donations, because we got a lot of cutscenes. I know I haven't given you much time, so go for it. That's okay. It's interesting to listen to you. But we do have a couple of donations specifically for you. Uh, for one me? says, Ms. Jackson, $50. All these improvs are such a treat. Thank you, Ben Stevens, 56, for an awesome run and awesome commentary. This is why I watch AGDQ. <laughs> Thank you. And F. Tazio donated $30 just saying, wow, I never thought that Ocarina of Time 3D might actually be more broken than the original. Told you. Yeah, who knew? <laughs> we got $100 from Anonymous saying simply, for the milkman. That's a reference to an upcoming donation incentive uh, to watch the milkman cutscene in Psychonauts. Uh, that one's up to... About $3,000 out of 5000 so keep those donations coming in. We can watch the wonderful Watch the Milkman cut scene. Black Sheep Vidya donated $50 saying, love me some Zelda, love me some speedruns, hate me some cancer. Had to make a donation during the Ocarina of Time run. Good luck to all the runners this week. Okay, Twinarova is... A bad boss because it's pretty much all luck whether it's good or not. Um, it's pretty random when they shoot at you, so sometimes they'll take a really long time. Like right now, they're just flying around. Um, but okay, there we go. Okay, she's in a good spot right now. There's 
a random chance that she'll shoot right away again. Nope, she didn't do it. Okay, if they if they hover over one of those floating platforms in the room, um, there's there's a, a good chance that they'll fire a second time. That's what we call a, a le double. Shout outs to Marco. <laughs> le double. All right. Um, hopefully. Okay, so once she transforms in the second half of this run, there's actually a really cool strat we can do. It's kind of weird. Hopefully I don't mess it up. Also, that was really close. I should mention that all of these attacks also will kill me if they hit me. Uh, it's not a very difficult boss, so but that was way too close right there. So I should probably pay better attention. Uh, it's also worth noting that you can stun these guys. Um, by shooting the hook shot at them. Uh, and so you can kind of keep track of them by doing that. Okay, so since power crouch stabbing no longer works in this game, normally if you have the master sword, you would have to two cycle this phase of the boss. But the debug file actually gave us the giant's knife, not the big Goron sword, but the giant's knife. So that gives us three jump slashes that we were able to use. Um, but the thing is, if we get too close to Twin Rova while we're jump slashing, uh, Actually, what do I want for items? I'm normally here. Okay, you, you, and I need one more. You, okay. Okay. So, uh, we have to do this weird thing where we put on the hover boots and kind of back away after every jump slash. And it's, it's so perfect because nice. she takes three jump slashes to kill. She takes three jump slashes to kill, and uh, you only have three jump slashes before the sword breaks. So it, it works out so well. It saves about um, 40 seconds, I think. I don't know. Um, shout outs to my anus. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's. it sounds like they're saying that. I don't know. It's a big Ocarina of Time meme. There it is. <laughs> Um, so, you'd think since there's another blue warp coming up, I'd, uh, you know, do that trick again. But actually, since I have all of the medallions right now, the, uh, the blue warp here, it's not going to play a cutscene when I enter it. So I don't have to do any of those really dumb, frame-perfect, precision-precise tricks. I can just walk right into the blue warp and continue onward, which is really nice. I, I don't want to have to uh, uh, do that trick again because it's not easy. I actually just went to go split there. I'm like, where's my keyboard? <laughs> Where is it? OK. So now we're going to move on to the water temple. We have two more dungeons to go. We have water temple, and we have, well, and we have the, um, the shadow temple. And uh, we already have all of the warp songs, too. I didn't mention that. So we have Serenade of Water. We can just warp straight to the water temple. And we also have Iron Boots, so we can just enter the Water Temple like normally, which uh, doesn't happen very often. So whenever you play any Warp Song, does that cancel its cutscene? Uh, it would, but Minuet of Force is the only one where the cutscene starts in the area that you warp to, uh -huh. right? So there's all different kinds of cutscenes in this game. Um, let's say the Blair of Fire was just the cutscene trigger for it was just anywhere in that map, right? Mm -hmm. Then it would work. Uh, but the Blair of Fire isn't where you warp into. It's just kind of by that bridge. Oh, wow. Hey. That's a hammer slide. It's the same thing as a hover boost. Basically, if you get a lot of speed and you put on hover boots, you go really fast. You just conserve momentum so well. Uh, and yeah, I have the boss key already from the debug file, so I can just enter the boss room, and that's the water temple. <laughs> Morpha is, um, no one should ever die to Morpha. <laughs> and uh, you know who you are. <laughs> I brought you up enough in this run. Uh, but yeah, Morph is a pretty easy boss. Um, you can kind of just get her into the corner and, and go away at her. Again it, with the it, it, it. Again. 
You gotta stop calling me out on these. You're making me look bad. <laughs> Alright, I need the Master Sword again, because the Broken Giant's Knife is kind of pointless to us. Uh, I thought I'd get the fast one there. Okay. Uh, Morpha's hitbox is a lot bigger in this game. She's actually kind of hard to hit on N64, but it's kind of easier. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Jump slash dead. Okay. Again, pretty easy. Does the debug file have just the hook shot or the long shot? It only has the hook shot, actually, which is kind of weird. Um, there's this other category. Bas basically, the thing I'm really good at in this game is I love 100%. That's like my favorite thing. Um, and there's this new category that kind of sprung up called 100, like glitch 100%. Um, and the definition for 100% is you have to get all the items from like where you're normally supposed to get them from. But glitch 100%, you can get them any way possible as long as you fill the inventory. And uh, in glitch 100%, we go to the debug file. So like the only item we actually have to get is like the long shot or something, as far as like collectibles go. Okay. Nice. All right, this should work. Uh, okay, so that is like probably the last thing in this run that can actually screw me over. So that's really nice to know that I got that. Okay, there's the water temple. Again, that trick is not easy. That's really hard. So I'm glad I didn't really mess him up too much in this run. Uh, but that's the last one of those we're going to be doing. Is it nighttime? Yes, it is. So I have to kill this cult again. Okay. Uh, so we've already beaten the Deku Tree, but we're going to go back because uh, because we want to make Link fall and suffer some more. Because <laughs> we're horrible people. Okay, so we're just going to do the exact same thing we did earlier. Okay, nice. So this is the first frame. What I was talking about earlier about there's... Oh, wow. Okay, I kind of messed that up. What I was talking about earlier when I said it's a frame-perfect trick, but it's actually two frames, it's because uh, you can use the touch screen to use items. So instead of hitting the, uh, the Y button, I can just use um, the touch screen to do it. And, uh, oh, I got hit. Uh, that actually delays the action of the item one frame. And so uh, if you're a frame early, you can do that to make one frame break two frames. OK, this works. Whew. OK, so now we're going to go back inside the Deku Tree. And we're pretty much just going to do the exact same thing we did earlier, where we Get out of bounds, make Link fall a bunch. And, oh, okay. I thought I fell there. Whoops. Uh, where, where the door to the Deku Tree is, there's like a little gap. Okay, wee. Okay. This hookshot jump is kind of tricky. Sometimes it doesn't work too well. Okay, that wasn't too bad. The first two were really good. I got them really fast. But this one's a little, took me a little bit longer. OK, wow, I was worried I wasn't going to hit the loading zone there. Uh, funny thing about loading zones in this game is they actually extend infinitely upwards. So as long as you're above a loading zone, you'll hit it, as long as there's not something else above the loading zone. So oh, wait, why am I saving? What am I doing? OK. Um, like I said before, as I said in the beginning of the run, uh, Furore's Wind is just like so broken. It's really, really good. So I'm going to put Furore's Wind in the Deku Tree boss room. And uh, we're going to do something cool with it again. Uh, we did something earlier in the run where we did what was known as a death hole wrong warp. Um, and here we're going to do the same thing. Uh, oh, the Cuckoo Hats. I didn't know I had that. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to kill this guy because he can get in my way. Okay, we're going to move this grave. And there's actually a grotto right here. Okay. So once again, I'm going to do Death Hole Wrong Whipping, which, as I said before, it tries to load the grotto and the title screen at the exact same time. And that puts us on play, uh, in play on the title screen on the file that we're using. And so we can use Ferrar's Wind in here. And 
Well, we only have one dungeon left to beat, so it takes us to Shadow Temple. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're just going to beat the dungeon. Um, so I said it before, but it, it's really important here. I can only use the items that I have on my X and Y buttons. And currently, those are Bombs and Furor's Wind. And I can also use my sword. So we're going to have to fight Bongo using just Bombs, Furor's Wind, and my sword. And it's a little scary, because I only have three hearts right now. And some of his attacks definitely do more than three hearts. So I have to be very careful right now. Oh, wow, that was close. That is definitely his scariest attack. I don't like when he does that one. Okay. Oh, I missed. All right. So if you, if you attack him with just the right timing, you can actually prevent him from getting up. I messed it up there. So hopefully he doesn't give me scary attacks again. Oh, wow, nice. He's giving me scary attacks, dude. Please. Okay. Nice. Woo. Well, that's over. <sighs> okay, so now all that we have left to do is to beat the game. Yeah. You'll see. Don't worry. Okay. So probably running a bit more behind on time than I would have liked because of the, the route mistake I made a bit early in the run. I think I made up for it about as best as I could uh, and still showing off how cool this route is. Um, honestly, besides that routing error, this has been like really good. Um, so it's probably closer to estimate than I would have liked, but yeah. Um, it's probably cutting close. Uh, so now I'm in four simple, you know, just think it's around. All right, so I'm doing a frame-perfect glitch. Got the frame. Uh, which is called Ocarina Items. Basically, if you use an item like uh, Furrow's Wind, Din's Fire, a bottled item on a certain frame that a bomb explodes while in your hand, you can pull out the Ocarina. And uh, I played Nocturne of Shadow, and uh, now I'm at the end of the game, so that's great. <laughs> Woo! So, uh, yeah, there's Zelda. Hey, where have you been? Long time no see. Actually, I've never seen you, except for, like, the beginning of the game. I don't know how she got here, but, you know, whatever. And uh, that's pretty much just really, really convenient that Nocturne of Shadow just happens to take you to this exact spot. I, I was talking when I did the Door of Time skip um, how the cutscene of the Temple of Time canceled Death Hole Glitch. Well, that's the exact same thing that happens with the Nocturne of Shadow. When you play the song, it actually cancels the Death Hole Wrong Word Glitch. And so when we enter that loading zone, it takes us exactly where we're supposed to go, which, like, it's, it's like a miracle that it works out. I, it, it's so convenient. It's crazy. So um, it's just so cool that it works. Um, yeah, other than that, that's, that's pretty much been Ocarina of Time 3D. This game is so crazy. Um, we have one more glitch to do, though. Uh, basically, Ganon, he knocks the Master Sword out of Link's hand, but we can actually prevent that. On N64, it's done with a super slide, uh, but there's another way to do it. We're going to interrupt Link's animation of getting the sword knocked out of his hand by using Din's fire as soon as we enter the cutscene of Ganon clearing the rubble. Um, it's kind of precise. Hopefully I get it. It's kind of funny when you do get it because Link kind of stands there like, dude, I don't care. What's up? Come at me, bro. So hopefully I get it. But it saves about um, probably 40 to 30 seconds because the Master Sword is the only item that does the amount of damage that it's supposed to do on Ganon. Every other item does one damage, while Master Sword still keeps its original damage values. OK, so I'm going to line up here. Nice, got it. Nice. OK. So this cutscene's going to look a little weird, because uh, Link's just, just look at Link's face here when he gets the Master Sword knocks out of his hair, hand. He's just like, dude, I don't care. I have died like five times in this run. I've been warped all over the place. You got nothing on me. 
<laughs> it's so good. I love that. <laughs> It's worth mentioning that I also picked up the heart container after Bongo Bongo because otherwise I wouldn't have much health energy. <laughs> uh, so although the Master Sword totally got knocked out of my hand right there, you all saw it, I'm sure. Uh, I, I somehow still have it. Uh, and so I, I can do the exact amount of damage I'm supposed to do on Ganon. So he's a really easy boss. Nice. So normally that first phase would take uh, 10 hits of any other item, but you only have to do three with Master Sword. Oh, look. That's a really cool sword. <laughs> Where'd you get it? <laughs> I got one just like it. All right. So now all I have to do is hit Ganon five more times and deal the final blow. What? Wasn't that five? Am I awful at counting again? That was only four. That was only four? Oh, my yeah. goodness. OK. Uh, getting ready on time. Cool. All right, all I got to do is land the final blow. OK. Time. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. Kick Cancer's butt. And remember to follow me on Snapchat at Sean Z. Meep. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for tuning in to Awesome <laughs> Games Done Quick 2017 Ocarina of Time 3D. All done. Great job, man. <laughs> All right, thanks for an awesome run there from Ben Stevens 56 of Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D. Coming up next, we're going to have an interview uh, about uh, Mega Man with Blecky. But first, a couple of donations. AGDQ is sponsored by the Yeti. The Yeti is the official t shirt sponsor of Games Done Quick events since 2012. Shirts are available during AGQ and until January 15th at midnight uh, Central Standard Time. So definitely go to www.theyeti.com slash AGDQ and get your shirts today. We have $100 from Monkey Smash. AGDQ has already become a yearly ritual for me, but a friend died of cancer last year. So the fact that AGDQ raises money for the Prevent Cancer Foundation has put this event even deeper into my heart. You all rock. Thank you, Monkey Smash. We have a $500 donation from Anonymous with uh, no text.